Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do my favorite books of 2021 video. So if you've seen my previous favorite books videos in the past, you'll know that I don't do top books of the year. I don't really like to organize my reading that way. So what I usually do with favorite books videos is that I talk I choose a few books that have been highlights in different ways of my reading year and I give them categories. So with that said, I have selected a pile of books that are not necessarily the best books I've read this year but that have been in some way highlights and important books for me. Um, over the course of 2021. The first one I wanted to mention is the only one I don't have a physical copy of because I borrowed it from the library. This is um, Glöm allt men inte mig by Filomena Grandin. And this is what I'm calling my favorite memoir of the, of the year. This memoir is about her relationship with her father who was a uh, owner of a music shop in Stockholm uh, and he had also owned a shop in the US before he uh, immigrated to Sweden and uh, he's known for having uh, a particular relationship with Bob Dylan. Something that I really liked about this is that you can tell that they have a very very close relationship that there is so much strong emotions in this relationship but he is also um, ha he is also suffering from Alzheimer's uh, towards the end of his life and she does not shy away from showing the harder harder things about their relationship and particularly when he was very poorly when when he was very ill all of the struggles that comes with that physically and practically um, all of the things that um, that created emotional toils and uh, the expenses of time and energy. Just seeing everything that there, that is there in their relationship and being willing to explore it and examine it very closely. This is actually getting a English translation early 2022. I think it was in April. Um, could be mistaken, but I will link the um, English um, the publisher that will be doing uh, the English translation of this book in the description below in case you're at all interested. So the next category I have is my favorite novel. So this is again something I read in, in the beginning of the year and I cannot think of any book I've read this year that has been stronger than this in its entirety. This is Abigail by Magda Zabo and translated by Len Ricks. This is a book about a young woman who is sent to boarding school around uh, around the Second World War and in Hungary and she is very she has grown up in a very privileged uh, circumstance and environment and she's very upset about being sent off away from her father who has been uh, the sole parent in her life and she's also been living together with a, um, a governess and she's very sad about being separated from both of them and she doesn't really understand why she has to be separated from them and most of this book is about her experience in the boarding school itself. The characterization that Magda Zabo does is something I had uh, noticed already in The Door that I read uh, a few years before this one um, and that was also a highlight of the year that I read it and then um, I read another book by her as well and it, you can tell that she's just really good at showing uh, complexity in characters no matter who they are even if they're fairly insignificant for the plot it you can tell um, you can s get a clear sense of them even if they just pass through the novel briefly. Um, another thing that I really love about this book is the construction of uh, situations and scenes. Often it is the unsaid or the, ga the gaps, the silences that are the most telling and in that sense, it is both, it is very, uh, Magda Zabo, I would say, is very descriptive in her writing style a lot of the time with t time and place and characters and all of that. But she's also really good at holding back and allowing you to fill in the gaps, allowing you to have 
to work a little bit um, to get a sense of what is happening that isn't said and I think that is also th something I really appreciate about Madizabu as a writer how she trusts the reader to be able to piece together the information she does give and having this perfect um, level of tension and pacing that makes the reading experience so enjoyable. Next up we have my category of most annotated which I always really enjoy thinking about because I am someone who loves annotating my books. A book that I've annotated a lot is probably one that I will love because it has been thought-provoking, it has made me pause and think and reflect and uh, for that reason the book that I've annotated the most is almost always one of my top books of the year aside from being the most annotated. So this uh, year it is Not to Read by Alejandra Zambra translated by Megan McDowell. This is a collection of essays, reviews, thoughts, ponderings on all things related to writing and reading and authors and specific books um, in reading life. I mean it is it is all of the topics that you will prob probably find interesting uh, if you're on booktube. There's a humorous tone throughout, he doesn't take himself too seriously, he enjoys all of these thought experiments and takes you along with him. So uh, one of the, the essays is on book collection, uh, on book collecting and what kinds of books you want in your collection and what the collection says about you. He talks about annotating in books and he actually, one of the essays was, he, he mentioned having bought a book secondhand and finding all of these uh, marginalia in it and apparently the person who had uh, written in it had not enjoyed it and so he was sort of reading the book and having this um, having this uh, other person be involved in his experience. I really like um, Zambra's thoughts and his topics and just his mind and as I said, as I said, definitely the humor as well that um, was delightful. The next category I have is Packs a Punch. I read uh, quite a few shorter books, I always do, uh, but I read uh, a few more this year because of Shorty September. The standout for, for, from Shorty September for me, without a single doubt, is The Lady and the Little Fox Fur by Violette Leduc, and this was translated by Derek Coltman. This is one of those books that I know I will be rereading in the future and I suspect I will get more and more out of it with each reading. It's about a elderly woman who is living alone in an apartment in Paris. She's very poor, uh, so she barely has enough money to buy food for herself. She is just about able to pay for her rent, so she hasn't become homeless yet. She has no meaningful um, human connections. She has no one that really cares about her or knows about her. Um, no family or friends or any other social connections and belonging. And this book is all about her reflecting on her existence and she talks about the poverty of, of her situation, of, of um, of not having enough uh, food and being hungry but she also talks about seeking out human companionship through just being around people and being allowed to get a glimpse into their lives and observing them and through the observations feeling like she's part of their um, their uh, connection and it is a um, a melancholic book but I thought it was just so well written. One of the categories that I've chosen is my most enjoyable book and that was Truffle Hound. On the trail of the world's most seductive scent with dreamer schemers and some extraordinary dogs by Rowan Jacobson. This is all about truffle hunting in different parts of the world and Rowan Jacobson sort of he talks to different parts, different types of people in the truffle industry, both traditional truffle hunters as well as people working with truffles in scientific research and in, in biological experiments. Some of them are trying to 
uh, farm truffles. Uh, he's talking to sellers of truffles. It is just a fascinating, passionate account on a quite, quite uh, unique type of um, organism. And much like in previous years when I've read a lot of fungi related books, uh, it's just a topic that I find very, very fun to read about. But the way Rowan Jacobson talks about it is so, as I said, very passionate and positive and inquisitive. And I, I feel like the, the way he's so uh, pal palpably curious about these things and how he's sharing all of that, all of the things that he's learning and the respect that he has towards the people he meets along the way and everything that they are able to share with him. This is the, th the type of nonfiction that I found so engaging and fun to read and um, to go all on all of these adventures with him to learn all of these new things, to see so many new wonders of the world that I hadn't come across before, but also his, as I said, his tone, and how he approached the topic, uh, made this one um, a standout in my entire 2021, but I did end up reading it at the end of the year. The next category I have is kind of a special one, and it is my the book that surprised me the most and slash the book that I resonated with the most. So a lot of a lot of books that I read this year have definitely resonated with me on a personal level, um, but this one, there were bits of this that just hit me harder than I was expecting and that has stuck with me through the year and definitely something also that has made me think in new ways and sort of had had an impact on me outside of my reading which I think is again why I think of it as a book that has really resonated with me and that is Turning Lessons from Swimming Berlin's Lakes by Jessica J. Lee uh, so I read both this and Two Trees Make a Forest by her this in 2021 and I uh, I know that she is currently writing her third book that I'm really excited to hear more about but this is talking about her experiences of swimming. She talks quite a lot about being biracial and having several places she calls home and several places that mean something to her heritage. Sort of the, the complicated geography that she has that uh, is part of her identity and the swimming kind of comes into the identity search and reflections and as I said, this is a book that took me by surprise because I was just expecting a swimming memoir kind of book and it is that but so much more and I loved it for all of the reflections on swimming which is why I was interested in it in the first place but so much of how she reflects on identity and how identity is related to space and place uh, both physical and internal has just stuck with me and has made me think a lot this year, this entire year and things that I've taken away and continue to think about for my own personal experiences and situation so I just, I feel very grateful to this book. The next category I have is the book I want to reread the most or the most rereadable book. Uh, quite a lot of books in 2021 are books that I could see myself revisiting many times in the future. But this one I know I will be rereading uh, many times and probably reread quite soon uh, and that is Cost of Living by Deborah Levy. This is the second book in her Living Autobiography series trilogy. Um, I read all of them in 2021. All of them were highlights of the year um, and I would have chosen Deborah Levy as my, my new favorite author but I had actually read something by her before 2021 uh, which I had not enjoyed. It was one of her novels and I am curious to read more of her fiction going forward but her non-fiction, her memoirs or the autobiographies, um, I cannot explain how comforting I find them. It is talking quite a lot about 
uh, connecting with other people and family, sort of made family, created family and belonging. There is something so warm about Deborah Levy's writing style that I can see myself returning to these memoirs whenever I am in need of, of comfort. Lastly, I wanted to mention a bonus category that I have and that is my favorite translator. So uh, this is a translator I had encountered before uh, 2021, but I read two of the books that she had translated in uh, the last year and she has quickly become my favorite translator to date. So it is Julia Quintus Carpenter. She is a translator from the Japanese to the English. And the two books that I had read uh, that she has translated in 2021, um, the two books that I read in 2021 that she has translated is The Great Passage by Shio Miura and An Eye Novel by Minae Mizumura. Um, I had also previously read uh, The Fall of Language in the Age of English by this author and translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter. And so there's a, a few reasons why uh, I really, really appreciate the translation that she does. Um, sometimes when you are reading a translated book, there is sort of a translator's note um, somewhere in the book, in the early parts of the book or at the end of it, and you can see the translator sort of reflecting on some of the choices that they make and of course the choices are uh, there's a myriad of, of choices to be made when you are translating a text into another language um, and so some of my appreciation of Juliet Bintz Carpenter is her choices how she balances what she what she translates and what she doesn't translate or what she has both the original Japanese and the translation with. Those kinds of things are things that I really appreciate about her. Um, the, the, the things, all of the choices, the tiny choices that she makes in her translation of a book. Um, another thing that I really like about her is uh, related to the selection of the books that she has translated. So as I, as I mentioned, I've read three of her translations and all three have in common the fact that they are centrally about language. Being able to convey a story and um, the essence of a book as well as a rhythm and form and structure, all of that is already a challenge. But then she has chosen books that talk centrally about language itself and, and conveying those discussions in another language is just... Um, I find it mesmerizing the way she manages to do that. Similarly with this one, the bilingual nature of it, you still get a very clear sense of the difference in tone from the parts that are English and the parts that are translated from the Japanese. You feel the difference in how the characters are, re are reflecting, um, how how their identity sort of shifts when they're thinking in English versus Japanese, how their communication differs in the two languages, even though the book itself is entirely in English. You can still sense a difference in attitude, in tone, in ways of thinking, in ways of communicating. And I think that is a feat. Uh, I, I don't know how else to explain it other than being constantly mesmerized at all of the choices she makes, all of the balancing acts that she does, and the work that that ends up being the, the final result of all of that. Um, so yeah, this is a translator I will be talking more about probably in the future, uh, because now she's... Uh, I find... I, I trust her so much that I'm pretty much willing to read any book just because she has translated it. So those are my favorite books of 2021. Some highlights, some books that have engaged me and been thought-provoking and memorable in different ways. Uh, I would love to know if you have made a favorite books video of 2021, uh, feel free to link it below or just share the books that have been highlights of your reading year. Have you read any of these books? I would love to chat about them uh, in the comments below. I hope you've had a fantastic start to 2021 and you're taking care of yourselves and I will talk to you soon. Bye!